This is the farmhouse where I grew up, where my father grew up, where my grandfather grew up, where my great-grandfather grew up. The main house was built in 1860. We got electricity in 1943 with the Rural Electrification Act. And now what I am doing is I'm removing the majority of the 1960 updates and reverting the era back to somewhere between 1920 and 1950. I'm going to show you each room in the order that I did them years ago. While I am no more of a carpenter or a designer than any member of my family has ever been, I'm doing it to suit me and my tastes. For this video, we're going to go all the way back to book one, the kitchen. It's been a long time before we finally got around to put in a range hood, but this week we did it. So the first thing to do is to pull off the right side of our stainless backsplash where we had our power strip. If you go all the way back to book one, you'll see where we did it and install the power for the range hood. In this case, we're using a flat plug, plugging it into the power strip there, as you see, and then we'll just run that wire up to the range hood. And with the wire connected, we put the movable section of stainless back into place and screwed it back to the wall. And then we made a little L bracket out of three quarter inch plywood and pocket screwed it together. And if you look real close, you see our signature penny that was inset into the wood like we've done on many other walls. And that was pocket screwed to the beam uh, you can see on the left and also to the wall so that now we had a completely flat surface to put up our range hood. And we had to do this because where we put our cooktop was right where that beam protruded. So to make it flat, we had to add that little piece. And then our range hood was screwed to the wall and you can see it's still covered in all that protective plastic because it's a stainless steel hood. Made by Winster, it is a WS38U. We chose it because it was A, stainless steel, B, had LED lights, and C, had restaurant style filters. From this other angle, you can see how the range hood is flat against the wall and how our little L bracket is pocket screwed to the wall. With the filters removed, you can get a look at the twin fans and what it looks like with the lights and the control buttons. And then we drilled a hole in that little L bracket, ran the wire, punched in the hole for the wires, put in the grommet, and connected it up. And then up on top, we locked in the plastic 7 to 6 inch pipe adapter and screwed it in place. And then it was a matter of taking our outside vent from Luxury Metals and putting it on the inside, marking around it with a pencil, and that is where the exhaust is going to go outdoors. And as you can see, that's where the hole is. On the left side of the Hoyt beam is the old outside of the house, which is now inside, backs up against the pantry. On the right side is outdoors so that is the only place we could stick the exhaust and then it was just a simple matter of drilling some holes in the drywall and we cut out the circle with a jigsaw now if you notice at the six o'clock position that hole we found that we were drilling into a two by four so we had to move up just a little bit to clear it Years ago when we put up the drywall, we knew roughly where that exhaust was going to go, so there was no fiberglass bat there. There was just a couple layers of the one-inch rigid polyiso insulation so that it would make it very easy to cut the hole. And there is our hole cut looking through to the outside wall. And then using a long bit, we drilled a series of holes all the way around going through to the outside. And this is what it looked like on the outside of the house. And with all those holes so close together, it made it very easy to pop that plug out. What you see sticking through the wall is the six inch end of 
the luxury metals vent. And here is the outside view and the close-up view. The reason why we chose the luxury metals vent is they have magnets on the flapper so that it's more likely to stay closed. And in the short term, what we've seen is it mostly stays closed, but there are gusts of wind that do pop it open, but it'll slam right shut again because and stay shut because of the magnets. And here we have the two Dura Black 90 degree elbow stainless steel pipes. We're trying to get them aligned. They adjust so that you can you don't have to have them at 90. And we've got it looking pretty good to set in the Dura Black adjustable pipe. And because of their adjustability, we were able to eyeball the alignment pretty well, as you can see. And this image shows you the Dura Black telescoping adjustable stainless pipe that is spanning the distance between the two elbows. We used aluminum tape to tape the elbow onto the vent hood. And then the other elbow is taped to the piece of pipe coming through the wall. And then that adjustable piece was just set onto the lower elbow and it was extended until it was in the upper elbow. And then we put two screws into the pre-made factory screw holes and it seems to be staying just fine without a external support. And then we spent more than a number of minutes getting all that white plastic off, which was an absolute bear. And that's, this is what it looks like fully assembled and ready to go. Okay, this is the vent hood on low. It sounds louder than I would have hoped. I believe that it's the uh, filters, the restaurant filters, because it was less noisy until I put those on. So there's low. There's medium. There's high. Back to low. I was hoping that it wasn't going to be quite so loud. However, I did want the restaurant uh, filters. I did not want the aluminum uh, mesh. So I guess I'm going to have to live with it.